Good afternoon and welcome to this, the last of the talks in today's online open day. My name is John McLeod. I'm Head of Admissions Liaison and Marketing here at Blackpool 6th. And you're also going to meet uh, my colleagues, Helen, Faye and Christina from the Admissions and Liaison team. Um, we're really delighted you've joined us uh, for this, 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 the final talk. We hope you've enjoyed the other talks if you've you've been able to attend those today the subject talks finding out all the the, the amazing range of of courses that we do offer um, do remember if you um haven't been able to catch those today those will be sent to you um so that you can you can view those later we'll expect that sort of later on next week um that you'll be able to to view those the focus of this particular talk today is on joining Blackpool 6. Um, if you are, um, as I know many of you will be, um, Year 11 students, um, we're hoping that you're, you're really excited the prospect of, of joining us at Blackpool 6 as a student and uh, taking advantage of, of, the, of the wonderful, the fantastic opportunities on offer to further your education and uh, your, your future career. And, and personal development is, that's a really important aspect of, of coming here as well. Um, you, you may be in the position, um, you know, of, of maybe th thinking, well, I'm not absolutely sure about this, I'm not so sure of, of, of your direction. Um, so we're, we're gonna really talk about how you do find out more about us and how you, you begin um, the process of joining Blackpool 6 and um, we would always stress that um, you know when you're applying to us that's a way of finding out more it doesn't tie you down anything to anything at this point I'm aware there may be younger students um, you know maybe not in year 11 um, and obviously parents and carers listening to this we hope that you find it really useful and informative um, it, it's never with the younger students it's, it's never too soon to to, to look at um, you know what your, your future can be um, so the aims of this particular talk, um, we're going to give you um, a, a quick overview of how you apply to Blackpool 6, how you, uh, how you um, join Blackpool 6. Um, so we're gonna, Helen's going to go through that process in, in, in more detail with you. Um, Christina and, and, and Faye are going to talk about the support and advice and guidance that, that's so important in, in making that decision. There's lots of sources of information there, and we're very keen, obviously, the most important thing is that you, you are making the right choice of the place that you to further your education, and um, that you're choosing the right courses that suit uh, you. From, from, as I say, we have a very wide and, uh, you know, a, a, a brilliant, course range and we want you to get those choices just right um, we're also going to be able to answer questions uh, we'll leave around 15 minutes to the end of the end of the talk to answer questions that you have so you can begin to uh, type those in at, at any stage and um, i would just say though that um you know uh, obviously uh, questions that are very very personal to you with personal details or whatever this is not the best route for those. Um, I will give you before um, we, we finish some ways that you can contact us. So obviously you mustn't be sharing any sort of personal information here, um, but we're very happy to deal with, with much more general questions about um, admissions to Blackpool 6, about, about courses, about course choices, etc. We'll do our very best to to answer those as, as well as possible. So I'm going to hand over now to um, Helen, who's going to take you through the application process. Hi, I'm Helen, and um, I'm the deputy of the admissions and school liaison team. And I'm just going to talk you through a little bit about our application process. So applications for Blackpool 6 are now open and you can apply to us online via our website. So if you visit the Blackpool 6 form website, go onto the home page, you'll see a, a button for applying and it will take you straight through to our application form. The application form is not too tricky. It's quite straightforward and this slide shows you um, the first page of the form itself and we ask you to give us some personal details, details of your name and uh, date of birth, uh, 
Um, and it goes on onto further pages to ask you for things like your home address, your email, and so on. Um, we ask you to be really, really careful when uh, filling in the application form uh, to be really accurate with the details that you give us because we do use um, the information to identify you and to keep in touch with you. Um, so there are further pages that ask for your parent and carer's contact details. And again, I'd ask you to be really, really careful that you make sure that everything is absolutely accurate. Um, later on the application, we ask you for some details about the GCSEs or the BTEC courses that you're studying at school. You'll find on this page that there is actually a drop down menu. So if you look to the left hand side of this page, you can see it says GCSE and BTEC, for example. So if you just um, click on the, the drop down to let us know what type of course you're taking at school and then there are further boxes for the subjects that you're taking so give us as much detail as you can give us all the subjects that you're doing at school and we do ask for predicted grades now students do worry a little bit when they're asked for predicted grades um, we don't make any judgments on the grades that you give us it is purely so that our team can give you the proper advice and guidance. And it's just an idea at this stage about how you think you might get on in your GCSEs. We're very aware that a lot of schools are not giving specific predicted grades at this stage. You've had some interruption to your studies in the last year. And I know that those predicted grades for some schools have been delayed but we still ask you to give us an estimate, some kind of idea, um, but these can be updated and can be changed and they are purely so that we can give you the right advice and guidance. If you do apply and you think that the predicted grades that your school has given you um, change, then you can update us with those at a later stage on our admissions email. So, on the course, we also ask you what courses you're interested in doing. Um, so again, if you're not sure, um, you can always change your mind about courses that you're interested in doing with us. But if you've got some idea when you apply, it's good to let us know and we can then um, help you to make the right decision for you. Again, there's a drop down box to tell us whether it is an A level or a BTEC or vocational course that you'd like to take. Um, so there are a very, very wide range of courses at Blackpool 6. Generally, students take three subjects or the equivalent of three. So on the A-level programme, for example, you can see there uh, some A-levels on the drop down. You would take three separate subjects. Um, on the BTEX or the vocational programme, um, you can take um, a triple course, for example, which is actually the equivalent of three A-levels. It does tell you on the application form whether a course is a single, a double or a triple. And you can mix and match the BTEC programme and um, the vocational programme with the A-level programme. So a double BTEC with one A-level or a single BTEC, for example. Don't worry too much at this stage about the actual combination of subjects. Just give us an idea of the sorts of things you're interested in and we can help you with um, honing your final decisions. You can always change your mind. Students sometimes worry when they apply that they won't have a chance to change things. And so they delay applying to us because they think they have to be absolutely sure what they want to do. But the best thing to do is get an application in and you can always change your mind about courses. Um, we do have a fantastic additional learning support team here for students who have particular um, support needs, additional needs. They may be medical or learning related and um, do give us some details on the application form so that our additional learning support team can get in touch with you. Everything is absolutely confidential um, and treated you know, with the utmost discretion, but we do want to be able to give you the support that you may need. So why apply now? We ask you to apply as soon as you possibly can and ideally before Christmas. 
And again, you might think, well, I'm not 100% sure yet. I'm not sure exactly what I want to study. Is Blackpool 6 absolutely where I want to go? If we are at all an option for you, we always encourage you to apply as soon as possible. You can apply to other places, but as long as you apply to us, then we can contact you. We can give you advice and guidance on the courses that you might want to do. We can also make sure that you're very aware of all the different events that are coming up. They may well still be virtual for some time to come, but we hope later this year that obviously we can uh, invite you into college. Uh, certainly we have a new student day at the end of the year after the GCSEs where we invite all our applicants to come and spend some time with us. So we really hope we'll be able to invite you into the building at that stage. But whatever it is that we're um, offering, and it might be in the departments, it might be things like an art exhibition or a music and performing arts um, uh, event, whatever it is, we will be able to tell you all about it. So please do um, apply. And as I say, it doesn't mean that uh, you're, um, you have to come to us at the end of the year. It just means that we can contact you and make sure that we give you the, the, the support with your choice making that you uh, may need. Normally, we do actually interview students. And again, it is purely so that we can give students some guidance with their career planning and their course choices. At the moment, unfortunately, we can't see you in school or in college. So we do review every single application very, very carefully. And if we feel we need to contact you at this stage, we will do by email or phone. And it will be just to have a little bit of a chat, just to make sure of some details, maybe uh, to ask you for a little bit of um, uh, further information. And again, it's all about helping to support your application and to help you with your final decision making. You don't make any final choices until you get your GCSE results in August. So this year is all about helping you to make those decisions that are right for you. So we look forward to hearing from you. And I'm going to um, pass over now to Christina, um, who's going to talk to you a little bit further. Thank you, Helen. Um, my name's Christina. I'm a school liaison and events officer here at Blackpool 6. And I'm also a, I used to be a student here as well. I want to chat to you a bit about our new student hub. So there's lots of information on our website and our prospectus um, for students of all ages, whether in your, you're in year eight, nine, 10 or 11. But our new student hub is a great tool for any year, year 11 students that have applied to us. There's lots of information on there um, you'll find lots of information about the courses that we offer. So you'll find our full course listing on there. And if you click on a specific subject, for example, business studies, you'll find things like reading lists. So there's lots of useful links on there to things like TED Talks, podcasts, news articles, videos, TV shows, which are all really relevant to the courses that you're signing up to. And that's a great thing to look at if you want to be sort of pre-prepared before you do start with us next September. There's also some information on there about our additional support team. You'll find leaflets on there and a lot more information about that team that Helen spoke about before. There's some information about student finance. So if you do come to Blackpool Sixth Form, there's lots of um, financial support on offer, depending on your household income. There's things like subsidised bus passes and free bus passes. So there's lots of financial support on offer for our students. You'll also find some information about transport in general. So you might not be sure which bus route you need to take um, or how to get your bus pass. So you'll find lots of information about that on there. Our student hub is also where we post lots of our upcoming events. So if we have things like our taste days, new student days, or any internal events, for example, our performing arts events that you might be interested in, you'll find all those on there as well. You'll also find all our contact information. So you might want to email us to let us know you've changed your mind about your courses. You might just want to know a little bit more information about a course. And you'll find all of our email addresses on there, as well as links to our social media pages. And like Helen was talking about before, you'll also find um, our application form. Another great thing that is on our new student hub is a frequent, frequently asked questions section. So from previous open days and from people asking us questions over our social media and on emails, you'll find the types of questions that we get asked on a regular basis. So there might be something on there um, that you can find out without having to contact us, which is a really great tool. 
There's also lots of videos on our new student hub. So you'll find videos from our student finance team. You'll find information and um, sorry, videos about the different sports that we offer at Blackpool Sixth Form. There's some videos from our assistant principal principal on there as well and also an information video about the pastoral and additional support that we offer at Blackpool Sixth Form as well as a video about our excellence program. So it is a really great place to go to if you have applied to us or you're thinking about applying to us and you want lots more information after today that you can just go on to perhaps at the weekend or after school and you just want to find out some additional reading or watch some videos it's a really great place to go. I'm going to pass on to Faye now, who's going to talk to you a bit about where to go if you want to find out some more information. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Faye. So I am one of the school liaison and events officers as well. Um, and I also came here as a student um, a bit longer ago than uh, Christina, though. Um, so I'm just going to tell you um, just about where else you can contact us really and where to look for um, all the things we've been talking about today. So as Christina's just gone through, uh, we have our website. It is an amazing tool for you to go on um, and have a look at all the information that Christina's uh, just gone through. We also have our social media. So we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, all social media. Um, so please come and give us a like, a follow, because on there we put all of our information as well and it's just quick for you to go on and and find that information um maybe on your phone so um everything from different departments so we have things like our performing arts department our public services um, and they put um links and things like that and videos um and what they're up to and if it's something that you're interested in it's really um good to see what they're actually doing within college and that's potentially what you'll be doing when you come to us um, we also have our prospectus, um, which you can see on the slide as well. Uh, so in here, uh, we have all our course listings and each course has um, a separate page. It will tell you a tiny bit about the course and um, why to study it with us, um, but also the entry requirements. So each specific course has specific entry requirements um, on top of sort of our minimum requirements for A-levels and uh, vocational. Um, so it's a really good, uh, quick, easy thing that you can pick up, have a good look through um, and look at those entry requirements now so you know sort of where you're working at and where you want to be. Um, we have uh, sent all these to our partner schools um, but if you are not at one of our partner schools and you do want a prospectus you can email us, I'll give you the email address in a minute um, and just email your name and your address um, and that you'd like a prospectus and we can send one out to you as well. We have all our careers links in schools. So um, me and Christina work in, I'm sorry, and Helen, um, work in partner schools. Uh, so there's around 16 schools we work in um, and we have contact in each of those schools. So um, you should know who your careers link is in school, but they get all of our information about upcoming events, um, what's going on at the moment, obviously videos that we're sending um, because we can't come into school. Uh, so if you have got any questions, you're not too sure um, how to get in touch with us, then you can ask your career link and they can obviously get in touch with us. And we also have um, obviously our emails. So we have our admissions email. So um, admissions at blackpool6.ac.uk. We have general inquiries. Um, so if there's anything, so if it is admissions based, obviously you can send it to us at admissions. But if it's a general question or about transport, support, anything like that, you can go to our general inquiries and then it can be sent to the relevant person and then they can get back in touch with you. Um, I'm now going to pass back to John. Uh, so thank you for listening. Yeah, so um, the last, well, almost the last bit of before we go into the Q&A is I'm going to say a little bit about enrolment. Uh, some people get a little bit confused between application and enrolment. Um, application is obviously where you, uh, as Helen's described, you put down what you'd like to study. You give us some information about your, yourself. Enrolment is actually the stage uh, where you, you formally become a student at, at Blackpool Sixth. Um, so it's really the, the, the culmination of, of your application and uh, joining the college. A, a key point of it is it, it's where you select, finally select your, your courses of study with us. 
Um, now, uh, from what we, we know about this, this coming year, um, the government has just recently announced that the GCSE results will be released on the 27th of August. That's a little later than um, it would normally be because that the whole exams, as you, as you I'm sure you'll be aware, are, bit, are being pushed back as well. Um, now, we, we're keeping this under quite close review um, because uh, this current year when we had the enrolment, um, we had to move to um, really email and, and phone enrolment as the main way of doing it. And it actually worked, worked extremely well. We got really good feedback from that. Um, th we, we, we would obviously ideally like to have more face-to-face uh, -face element in it, but that's going to be dependent on what the, the situation with the coronavirus restrictions is then. But we'll keep you posted in, on that. And really, that's another advantage of early application. You're going to get all that information as, as soon as we, we're able to share it with you. Um, so uh, in terms of what you need to enroll, um, it's worth just putting in that obviously we can't enroll you until you have your GCSE or any other results, a full set of results. So if you had done something earlier in school and got a result for it, um, we need to see that as well. Um, you'd also need some ID, um, and I know it's a long way ahead, but it's worth just putting this idea to you that um, we accept either a, a passport, if you have one, or the long version of your birth certificate. Um, don't worry at all about too much detail. There's, there's more on our website and we'll share that with you, but it's worth just mentioning. And as I say, it is the point at which you confirm your details and your subject choices. Um, so we will be doing we will be doing the enrolment from the the twenty seventh um, onwards, but we'll keep you posted about exactly the time, exactly the the arrangements there. Um, there is a lot of support and help and guidance at enrolment. So, you know, although you will have had a lot of help through the year, if you're still uncertain, say after getting the results, what to do. The key words are don't don't worry don't worry about anything there. We can we can help you with that. We can talk you through what the what the different possibilities are, etc. And make sure you get exactly the right uh, course of, of study uh, you know, for your future. And then just worth mentioning after that, um, the the term starts with some induction days. And what that means is that it's a settling in period uh, for you. We just have our new students in first, so you have the the run of the of the building and and you know more space to uh, you know to 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 get to know everything. Um, your per, your pastoral mentor um, becomes a very important person. That's the person a bit like a form tutor at, at school who's is really going to look after your progress, deal with any questions or concerns you may have um, through the way, help you plan your future beyond college as, as well. Um, so that's scheduled to start on the, the 7th of September, uh, that, that period of induction. But again, there will be lots more information about that. It is, it is still quite a long way ahead. Okay, um, I'm just going to, now I mentioned about ways of contacting us. I can see, by the way, coming in some, some brilliant questions, which we'll, we'll get to in a, in a moment. Um, but I did say right at the start that there are lots of ways of contacting us. And I think Faye has, has, has mentioned this as well. Um, I think the key one I'm recommending is the admissions at Blackpool 6 um, dot ac dot uk email which comes directly into our team here um, so during the the working week and and actually during the the holiday periods but during the you know working hours we were responding to those and that's the brilliant place for any questions that you have anything that's uncertain if you if you've changed your mind about any courses etc you want want to do that or you know there's just just anything that, that you want to follow up that's the perfect way to do it we do also make quite a lot of use of facebook messenger and um, if you are a facebook user that's another way again i would stress during during working hours we, we're responding to to those and um, we've also added a messenger app which some of you may have noticed to our website at the bottom there and uh, that you can use if you're not a facebook user the message comes through as as, as guest um, 
but we we can respond in in that way um yeah um there is the phone number as well um at the moment we we, we do have a situation where some of the team working from home for but for some of the time, some some in college. So I, I, my, my tip would be use the email. We're, we're very quick on that. Um, that. That's the best way to do it. But, you know, if you want to, to call us, there's, there's always that, that possibility there. OK, um, so we're going to move into the uh, to the Q&A now. And I can, yeah, really great questions I can see um, here, some of which I think we may have... Um, actually dealt with along the way but there's no harm in in sort of going going through those in a little bit more detail um so the, the question the first one i've got here's question from from lucy um so um lucy's asked can i apply to do an epq which is the extended project qualification or do i get selected and if I have to be selected, how do I increase my chances? So I'd say this is this is a great question, Lucy. This is a question about our excellence program as well, I think, really, because the EPQ is is very much part of that. So I'll put that out there to 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 our panel of experts here, the rest of the team. So who wants to to answer that one? Yeah, I'll just say that. Um Ordinarily, you don't actually specifically apply to do an EPQ. You would generally be part of our excellence program. And the excellence program is um, for students who have achieved very, very high GCSE results and are specifically looking to apply to some of the elite universities such as Oxford, Cambridge, uh, Durham, and um, some of the courses that are very, very competitive, degree courses such as medicine in particular. So um, you would not specifically apply for the excellence program. You would um, really sort of automatically um, be put into the excellence program if you get mainly sevens, eights, nines at GCSE. So that's something that is um, uh, organised at enrolment. So it's not something you can do in advance. And then at that stage, the excellence programme team would talk to you about the EPQ and how you can go about doing that. But if you want any more information about the excellence programme, it's all there on the website. Excellent. Yes, there is a lot, as Helen said, on the website there. Um, and so, yes, and our coordinator of the program peter wright i'm sure will be delighted to you know get in contact with you with you to, to give you more information if you need it just email us as i say and uh, we can get that information to you and um, so I, I hope that's that's dealt with that one um we've got a question from bella um is there any pastoral support to help us adjust or go to if we have any worries now i did i did mention obviously that the pastoral mentor is the key person there um, so I've, I've dealt with a little bit about that, but I don't know if any of the rest of the team would like to say a bit more. Um, Christine is offering to to say a bit more there. Yeah, so we do have a fantastic uh, pastoral mentor team here at Blackpool Sixth Form. So you'll meet them when you first start with us and they'll stay with you throughout your two years here at Sixth Form. So you'll have a pastoral mentor group and other students um, that are under that pastoral mentor. They'll help you with any worries that you have if you don't feel like you're settling in properly properly if you feel like you're not dealing well with your coursework or a vision something like that you can go to them with absolutely anything um you can organize one-to-ones with them where they'll help set goals between the two of you and they're also always available on their emails during um the working hours as well which is a great way to contact them and um, they'll also help you with things like applying to universities um, applying for higher apprenticeships after sixth form and they'll help you go through the UCAS process as well so they're a really fantastic team and yes there is lots and lots of support on offer here at Blackpool sixth form to help you settle in and then to stay with you throughout your two years with us. Great thanks Christina yes uh, question from from Dylan um, this is around the number of courses uh, Dylan said you said generally mm. so does that mean it's possible to take more than three courses so it's, it's this question of of how many courses to, to take anyone want to I think I think I like said generally um, and so apologies if that was a little misleading um, the very very large majority of our students take three and that's because if you do want to go to university that is 
what the universities would require from you. So it's absolutely not necessary to do four A-levels. Um, even somebody who has achieved extremely high GCSE grades, um, they don't need to do four um, A-levels. Uh, we would rather that students concentrated on getting three fantastic grades rather than watering their grades down across four subjects. Very, very occasionally a student might do four, but it would be for very specific um, reasons. And that's something that would be discussed at enrolment um, and uh, with with people who perhaps from the excellence program and so on. So I think um, we wouldn't absolutely say no to four, but would it, we wouldn't encourage it ordinarily. Um, I think somebody later on does ask about what GCSEs um, would I need to take um, to, to do four subjects at A-level. And I think it's just generally, I think it's Emily, Emily White says, um, what GCSEs would I need to take? If you take the GCSEs that you take and do as well as you possibly can in those um, subjects. Um, and we would we would obviously take into account the reasons why you might want to take four, but, but we, would, we would err against that. Okay, thanks, Helen. Um, next question that I've got here is from Lucy. How do you change your application? I, I think we, we, we did touch on this, but uh, Faye, would you like to take that one? Yeah, um, so yeah, if you do want to change your application, um, please don't put another application in. I know some people think they have to put it in again if they want to change, um, whether it be the predicted grades or the um, course that they want to study, just email us. So email us at admissions um, at blackpool6.ac.uk um, and just put your name, your date of birth, just so we know, um, and we can link it to your application um, and whatever it is that you want to change. So if it is that you're, you've put a course down and you want to change that to a different course, tell us what you want to take off and what you want to put on um, or whatever it is that you, you need to change. Give us that detail um, and then we can just change that straight away in your application for you. Thanks, Faye. And I think that's a, it's a really important point, and I hope it's come across that, uh, you know, we don't expect you to have all the answers when you put your application in. Um, it, it's very common for people to change their, their choices through the year, and it, it's not a problem to us uh, at all. So, you know, please do that if you feel you need more advice on the particular combination. As I say, it's only really at enrolment that that, that is finalised, and, and there is quite a lot of time up to that point so don't worry about that at all um next question really good question here from from bella um would you recommend to take btech or a levels who, who wants to to take that one and christina hi bella yeah so i'd say that definitely depends on the person as an individual so at gcse did you study some btechs perhaps in business studies did you find that you coped with the coursework a lot better than you cope with preparing for exams some people find exams really easy and sort of enjoy doing exams some people prefer doing coursework and spending more time over the year um chipping away at that grade so it depends sort of how you work best as a person and how you revise best but also depends what subjects you want to study so some subjects we only have as a levels for example psychology we only have that as an a level business studies we have that as a btech and an a level so it depends what subjects you want to study if you want a sort of a mixture of both you may be one one subject that has exams you can choose one a level with perhaps a double btech and you've not got so much pressure then at the end of your two years with your exams so it depends as you, on you as a person it also depends what university you want to apply for and what course that is they some universities might require you to study a levels some would take a levels on btex which most do now so it depends on the individual but if you did want to have a chat about your specific um situation and what you're thinking about doing after sixth form then you can definitely get in touch with us and we can arrange a phone call about that great thanks yeah brilliant um next question um from alfie this is quite a a sort of specific course combination one. I'm interested in a career in law and thinking of studying law, criminology, and either sociology or IE. Uh, which combination would you recommend if I'm considering university? Uh, who would you like to take that one on? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, again, um, it depends on what kind of law you're looking to do, Alfie. So if you're looking to be a solicitor uh, or even a barrister, um, the criminology is perhaps not 
quite so uh, useful as studying A-level law. Uh, criminology is possibly a little bit more administrative uh, in terms of what it leads on to. Um, you can really do any combination of the four subjects that you've put there, uh, all have some relevance to a career in law, but it, it again, it does depend quite specifically on what kind of law you're interested in. Um, so really it would be that we would have a further chat with you um, about your application and we would um, find out a little bit more about exactly what it is that you're planning to do in terms of um, maybe a degree at university and um, specifically what kind of law you want to do. All of those subjects are really useful for um, law in general, uh, but we would um, we would need to talk to you probably a little bit further um, to try and hone it down for you. Uh, so sorry, that's not an actually, you know, it's not a, a final um, answer there, but um, hopefully it gives you a little bit more information. And uh, if we haven't actually interviewed you yet, if you've not applied to us and you are in year 11, if you do apply, we'll be in touch and um, we can discuss that further. Thanks, Helen. Great. Um, I, here's a, a, a transport-related question. Um, so we may want to sort of just point to the, the source of, uh, of how people find this out, unless people actually know the exact bus route. But I live in Cleveland. What bus do I get to six for? Yeah. Anyone want to? Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, I used to get the 84, <laughs> but it's probably still not going anymore. Um, yeah, so we've got a transport section on our website. Uh, so if you just um, go there, it should hopefully answer any questions on transport um, from whether it be Cleveland or coming from Kirkham, uh, Lytham. Um, and if you do have any specific questions, again, if you can email them to admissions and then we can send them on to our transport team and they can get back to you and answer those specific questions as well. Thanks, Faye. Great. And in fact, Rory's question is a little bit similar. I think you've answered that. Where can we find a list of transport methods to Blackpool 6? So it's really, there's quite a lot, Rory, there on our website that, that does deal with that. But if you, if you if it's not giving you the very specific answer, then just that admissions um, email and we'll, we'll get the answer to you in, in no time. Um, Amelia, is accepting a conditional offer different to enrolling? Okay, so anyone want to... Take that, that that one up. Uh, perhaps Helen, because I'm yes, I will do, covered yes, by your fine. your section, really. Um, also, so. Yes, when we send you a, a conditional offer, it means that we have looked at your application form, we've been through the details, we're happy with what's on there. Um, if there's something missing or there are things that we need to discuss with you further, we will contact you and um, and give you the advice and guidance. Um, and then once we get to a stage where we think that um, we can offer you a place, then the offer is conditional. And that just purely means means that as long as you get the required results for entry, um, then you do have a place with us. So we do ask you to acknowledge receipt of the conditional offer, but that's not the same as enrolling with us. So once you have your offer, then you're free to just get on with your year, get on with your GCSEs and, um, you know, take advantage of what we're offering to help you with your decision making. And then once the GCSE results actually come out, and you have your final grades, that's when you enrol with us. And that's when all the final decisions are made and the final advice and guidance is given and you actually sign up to join Blackpool 6. So that's, that's the difference, basically. Great, thanks, Helen. Um, this one's come through as a, as a guest question. What support is there available for students who would like to take a gap year after their A-levels? And, and I, I think that's, that's also a question around the help and support that, that we give students really for the next stage. Um, who, who would like to, to take that one on? Yeah, I'll take uh, that. Um, so we have what's called our futures team um, and they're a team who are brilliant at um, having a discussion with you to um, discuss what you want to do after uh, sixth form. So whether that be going to university for that UCAS forms, going into higher ed apprenticeship, or uh, like you said, taking a gap year. So um, they can give you all that advice and guidance on what to do. It might be uh, that you're looking into the university, but you want to defer for a year or whatever it may be, and they can give you all that support. Um, so that can come from futures, but also from your pastoral mentor as well. But you will get support on that. 
Great. I think we're moving down. Um, we've got a question from Angelo. Um, what is the diff? What are the differences between the single, double, and triple in the vocational courses? Any who'd like to, uh, Christina? Thanks. For you. So, um, like Helen spoke about before, you need to study the equivalent of three A levels. So, if you study a triple B tech, for example, triple travel and tourism, that takes up all your options, and you wouldn't study anything else. Or you could do double travel and tourism with a single A level, for example, which would also add up to three. In terms of dif the differences between the courses, um, you just study more modules where, between studying a single, double and a triple. So um, there'll be things in the triple that you won't study in the double, but there will be elements that students in the single and the double will study, for example, events. Might be one of the modules. So you just study more modules. It depends um, sort of how much you enjoy that subject and how big that is a part of what you want to go on to after sixth form and um, but yeah as long as you add that up to three then that's fine great thanks Christina um question here if another lockdown occurs during a time at Blackpool 6 what methods would you use for home learning I'm, I'm going to take this this this, this one um, I mean I, I think one thing that that, that studies in great stead at Blackpool 6 is that we, we're fantastic we've had a We've got a fantastic system of technology for learning, um, which we've we sort of led the sector in lots of ways for this for for many years. So we've we've been able to do during the the, the lock the lockdown period early in the year, um, we're able to to provide you know fantastic um, learning opportunities for students. Obviously, you know that not replacing the the face to face by any means, but um, use of things like Google Classroom um, software that the students have available available just on their computers or we can we can provide for for them to to do really uh, you know very sort of in-depth stuff within their subject areas so we've got that online learning platform you know really up to a T and um, we're, we're continually developing that really very innovative in that um, at the moment it's worth saying um, we've, we've got an alternating timetable where students are, are spending a, a week of lessons in college and the next week is, is delivered remotely and um, that is continually under review and obviously we, we, we can't say exactly what the situation will be next year fingers crossed and fingers and toes crossed everything everything you know returns much more to normal but I think what I, we can reassure you is that you know we, we, we're fantastic at supporting students you know in the classroom and and remotely um, so An Angelo had the question here about how many courses do we choose? I, I think we have really covered that one off in terms of um, it's three courses in very few circumstances. Four. Um, question from Dylan. Um, in high school, I was part of the Excellence Academy program, which my school came third. Does that mean I'll be part of the Excellence program in, in college? Um, I think. As, as we're just nearing the end of our time, I'll, I'll just add to what Helen has really uh, said on this. Um, it, it doesn't actually automatically mean that you're part of the programme here, that because the excellence programme is is done on your GCSE grades, and you need an, an average of a of a seven from those grades across the board for that particular programme. There's quite a lot of information about that on the on the website, but that's that's great to hear. You have been part of that program and that that's going to put you in great you know great stead for your for your studies here um, I think we'll just be able to perhaps take one or two more quick questions if I've not been able to cover everything just remember you can always ask us the, at the admissions um, email that we keep plugging um, all the other routes so um, but we are coming towards the end of our time um, so question from Faye, this might as well be for Faye, I think. Uh, question, do psychology, business studies and economics A-level work together? Faye, do you want to? Um, yeah, um, it really depends on what you're wanting to do, really. Um, if you're really unsure about your future career, um, then you can study three different subjects that don't necessarily pair together. It might be just subjects that you enjoy. Um, for example, when I came here, I did music, biology and psychology, which don't really go together as um, sort of a matching combination. Um, so yeah, as, as long as you're sort of, you're gonna enjoy those subjects and um, then hopefully you can do well in those subjects. Um, if you were looking at going to a specific career, um, like Helen was saying before, like veterinary or uh, medicine, 
then I'll say it would need to be a specific subject that you would study. But um, other than that, you can do almost any combination with us. So, yeah, they go together. Thanks. Great. Um, very quick fire last two I'll, I'll just take. Um, in Blackpool 6, do you use first names between teachers and students? Yes, we do. And that, that's something that is quite different from school. And I, I think it shows, you know, we, we have got a very adult environment here and you are moving on a stage in your education. It's things like not having, you know, a set uniform at all. So you, you notice quite a number of differences and that's an important one. Um, Jasmine, if we've re already received a conditional offer to Blackpool 6, can we still change our A-level BTEC? Uh, choices yes uh, basically the thing we said before at any point you can change your course choices really leading up to enrollment just just send us that 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 email um okay and we or you know if you need any help and advice we're there to do it okay i'm just going to um uh, we've got one last question just coming could, could you choose all three courses as btech and still get into university yes definitely yeah the vast majority of our our BTEC students, just like our A-level students, have that option of university, and, and very many, you know, do go to university. You know, I think I think it's 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 well over seventy percent of our students choose to do that. But others choose to go on to high quality training, like um, high level apprenticeship programs or other programs as well. It, you get a lot of support in making that choice, but BTEC is certainly no barrier. At all, in fact, the opposite. Um, you know, for the vast majority of university courses, it works extremely well. But if you need more particular advice and guidance, we're always there to give it. I think I'm going to have to. I think I just act, actually, actually, we've cleared the inbox there, so uh, mm -hmm. I think it's time to sort of bring it to a close. So many thanks for uh, bearing with us, listening um, right at the end of the event. Um, you know, I think we've enjoyed certainly dealing with the questions. There've been great questions there. Uh, we do hope it's been useful, the whole, not just this talk, but the, the online event. Obviously, it is our you know, very deep-seated wish that we, we can open the doors and have students uh, you know, uh, come in to, you, yourselves come in and to have a look around the college, and we'll be able to do that you know, as, as, as soon as possible. As soon as, soon as we're able to do that, we'll, we'll keep you informed of those possibilities. Um, our next open event is actually the 3rd of February and we're planning some really different stuff for that it will be it does look like it will be an online event once again but we'll have quite a different approach there different information for parents and carers and um, we're looking to run some virtual taster um, acti uh, or activities you can try out in the different subjects uh, looking to do some virtual tours around the college so uh, please don't think it will be just the same as this one and we'll get all that information out to you especially if you apply I think that's the key message for today get your applications in please um, you know we're, we're, we're always pleased to see those come in and uh, ask us any questions you, you want um, from that so I think it just remains for us to um, you know wish you all a very, very best for the future, whatever you, you decide to do. And a little bit um, sort of more short term, have, have a great rest of the weekend. So bye, bye from us now. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. bye.